get ready to begin this matrimonial covenant given to God. Beautiful song that we want to kind of change some words if we aim to this covenant with God. You don't have to worry about being a fool for each other. Fools are not in the covenant of God. It's a relationship. The awesomeness of what you're making a covenant of. Some songs are beautiful and privacy in the bedroom. And some songs are not quite able to in the church, but I want you all to know this is a good day. Look at your bride before I ask you to go and get it. So you won't be so nervous. Make sure this is really who you want. Look real good. You're getting ready to leave your mother's house. As gorgeous as she said to love you, Pastor just want to tell you, she won't look like that early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to take it. I'm still going to take it. Sound pretty good, but you're going to get your bride. Who gets this bride in marriage? Take your bride and bring her home. Actually, the known as team. Is this who you want? You didn't even look at him again for the last time. <laughs> I really believe this is it. And I stand highly honored to put you two together. Because what I see, not only from the natural, but I see much further in the spiritual realm. And I see what God and make his example. Your wedding today, why is so unique? Not only are you rich, but you are symbolic to what Christ means to the church, the day when the church becomes the bride of Jesus Christ. As Reverend Powell takes us into prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we once again take this time for an opportunity to bless your name and as you will seek those who come together in marriage as one. We pray, Lord, that they come together as one, as they bring their individual characteristics and personalities and quirks and all the things that make them who they are as Tina and Edward. They know that by their love for each other and their forbearance and forgiveness to each other, that they can blend as one. We know, Lord, as we gather here, the saints here, and also the church that already been graduated for our eye, is seen right now, millions and millions of weddings have taken place. But this one is special because the people here are special. You may know another life than Tina and Edward. Because of the needs they have by themselves and now together, we have a tremendous third is that the unity of the body of Christ, the mystery of the body of Christ coming together now. And that we're being witness to. We are those who are now the the body of Christ, the blessings of the Lord upon this unity, all things that make for righteousness sake. We claim right now in faith believing with great expectations that today is like no other day in their lives. And Lord, we bid this time back into your hand. And we know, Lord, that you're pleased by watching this union, because this is your will and your order. So in the name of Christ, and it all possible, we continue with this ceremony. Amen. As I read from the scriptures from the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians, I want you both to pay very close attention to the words that are stated here. They are the words from God's word that the Holy Spirit will honor as we stand and live in faith. The world has an idea that marriage is simply a legal contract. It is, and we won't take a light of that. But at the same time, it is a spiritual contract. When the words of faith are spoken according to the power of God, between two born again believers, the power of God goes into operation. There is absolutely a miracle that takes place in the faith 
of these two people's release in God's song. God signed their faith and bring them into union together. So with these thoughts in mind, listen very carefully to these words. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the same of the body. And do you know we have someone like Edward? And I believe he stands in more to stand taller than that place. Give him a chance to be that person that God has put as you to save up. And I know with the love of you and the love of God, he will become that. There also is a church is subject unto Christ. So let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it, cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present to himself a glorious church not having spots, wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blameless. So I noticed when the king was coming down the aisle, your best man just kind of pat you on the back. I think if he would just give it to me in the street talk, he would say, wow, look what she did there. Same as Christ as ours, as she journeyed in this way. So all men love their wives in their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man have I in his own flesh, but there she cherish it. But separation must not be good. And she learn and get to know each other. And the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now upon your public profession of your faith, you have made known to all men that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your Lord and Savior. So I'm going to make this announcement in front of these congregations and these witnesses. A miracle has taken place. The whole Spirit is going to use your creative power that you want to speak from your word, your mouth to agree to cause your spirit to be reborn. And as you are speaking the unity, God causes the body to come. The very creative power of God's word will join you together today. Bless <laughs> you. Are you in there? Oh, he's in there. It's back ten. Good night. All right. Okay, let's go to the Bible. Edwards, do you take tea that you call as your wife, even as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loved the church, to protect her and care for her the rest of your life? If you do respond, I do.